Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. As you can tell by the background, we are back in the basement and if you've been following along, I've been slowly but surely working and chipping away at the lower level of our house. We've done the guest bathroom, the laundry room, the bar, and then the reading nook, which is right behind me. And today I am finally getting started on my workshop. This honestly should have been one of the first things that I did in this house especially with how many projects I've worked on, but we are just getting around to it now. So this video is going to be the start of the workshop. I want it to be a functional and inspiring space. And right now it is just not that. I literally have tools and wood and just all sorts of stuff everywhere. So today we are going to organize that. I'm gonna show you what the space looks like right now. And I also wanna go over the plans and I also need your help in making some of these choices. So hopefully you guys can give me your input. I just cannot wait to get started. And really quickly, I want to thank Shaker and Spoon for sponsoring today's video. I'll talk a little bit more about them later on. For now, let me turn you around and show you guys what we're working with. Okay, you guys, brace yourselves. Here it is, the workshop, ta-da! Okay, so to give you some perspective, this is where the reading nook is. And then back here is where I want to put the workshop. This whole area is just basically the main living area. And I started kind of organizing things. I don't even want to start organizing this, but and must be done today. But let me take you through what is going on in my mind. So this whole back area, and then this corner back there is going to be the workshop area. Like even walking through this, this is definitely a safety hazard and oh, I just need to get it figured out. This is the area that I am focusing on today and then right now through here where I have all this plastic up is where the workshop is gonna be. I have the plastic up because obviously we have nice furniture over there and I just don't want to get sawdust in the clean areas so I have these up but this is going to be where I film all the projects. I'm still trying to figure out if I want to have the main area go this way or this way. Let me know what you guys think. Would you rather see this view or would you rather see this view when I film my videos? I think why I'm hesitant about this view is just because of that window but I know that I will make it work somehow, obviously put some plants up there and that will probably fix it. But yeah, as you can see, this part is just like a little nook and I have all my tools over there. It's also covered so that the sawdust doesn't get on them. This whole system is just not working the best. So we're going to get that sorted out in the next video. But for now, this has to be addressed. This is all of my scrap wood and I hold on to it because I'm a little bit of a hoarder and I feel like I can make something with it in the future. But the time has come. I really do need to go through all this and figure out what I can actually use and then what I can put away. This is a huge task, but it is a necessary first step for me to actually get this workshop in order. And once I get this all organized, I can actually figure out the layout that I want to do and how we are going to make this more of our vibe and our style. So I hope that you are ready for the ride. Let's clear this all out, get it organized, and then paint the walls. Raise your hand if you're the type of DIYer that just cannot be bothered to clean after they finish a project because that is 100% me and I cannot believe I let it get this bad. Things just get out of hand, especially if you're doing DIYs every week and I just need to start allotting time to actually clean at the end of a project. So please keep me accountable in the future if you guys see my workshop and it's looking like a mess in the future. I would truly appreciate that because I really wanna avoid this from happening again in the future. I basically have a lumber yard in here at this point. There are a ton of scraps, leftover trim pieces, and even brand new lumber that I haven't used yet. So I'm sorting everything out by wood that I'll be keeping versus donating. Most of the larger pieces, like the plywood, I'm actually going to keep, and I put that into the closet behind that door that you see in the space. No one wants to see those. Goodbye, friends. Ew. I did find a workshop in Chicago that takes donations, so if you're in the same boat as me and you want to donate your unused wood, definitely check out local workshops and centers that will take your scraps. And I'll actually link the workshop that I'm donating to in the description box below in case you guys are in the Chicagoland area and want to do the same. I have not seen it this clean since the day we moved in. <laughs> 
So you might be thinking, Tina, I thought you said you were going to paint the whole basement navy blue. Well, you're right, except for the workshop. That's actually going to be separated from the living area. So I'm painting it white for filming purposes. A lot of videos are going to be shot in this area, so a bright white background is key. I'm gonna call it a night and pick back up tomorrow. And right now I'm actually going to break in the bar. I think it is an appropriate time to celebrate the new workshop as well as the new bar, which I'm so glad that you guys love. My shaker and spoon box is here. It has everything that I need to make a delicious cocktail. And if you haven't heard of Shaker and Spoon before, they are a monthly cocktail subscription service. They deliver the craft cocktail experience right to your front door. And each month you'll receive a box with three one-of-a-kind recipes Recipes. They're created by world-class bartenders and all you need is your favorite liquor. So each of these boxes comes with unique ingredients and you can choose from a ton on their website. I chose the Fruits of Fall box because I thought that was really appropriate for the new changing season. So let's take a look inside my box. So it has all of the recipe cards right here. And then all of these goodies, the bottles that they come with are really cute and you can actually use them as decor and display on your bar like I'm going to do. And just with one of these boxes, you can make a dozen drinks. So if you're someone like me who loves to entertain, this is really perfect to welcome your guests with. This would also make such a cute housewarming gift so if you're looking for any gifts for friends definitely check out shaker and spoon and they're also giving you guys twenty dollars off a shaker and spoon subscription with my link below and i also have a code so i have all that info below for you guys so make sure you check them out and thank you again to shaker and spoon for sponsoring the video The paint is dry. It's looking a lot more open down here. And now what I'm gonna do is actually create a little mural on this back wall. I feel like it just needs some life. Especially since I filmed down here so much, I want it to be fun and inspirational. So I did mock up a design and I'll put it on the screen here. It's very minimal and colorful and I'm going to try to use only colors that I already have. And to sketch it all in, I'm going to use some pencil and then also use painter's tape to help me along the way. This mural has a bunch of different arches, so I'm going to create them with a DIY compass, which I'm doing it two different ways. So the first is the string and pencil method. For trickier areas like the edge of the wall over here, all you need to do is to attach the pencil to a piece of string, and then you can nail down the other end, but I was a little bit lazy, so I just used my finger and held it down as I made the circle shape. For the full arch, I ended up using a scrap piece of wood with a hole in it. That is where our pencil is going to sit, and I'm just going to nail that to the wall so that it is nice and sturdy, and I found that using this piece of wood just gives me such an even arch, especially since the pencil is sitting perfectly perpendicular. So I really like this method. It does require a little bit more work, but both ways work. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but this is how it's looking. I have everything kind of spaced out because there is going to be stuff in front of it, which will fill up all the gaps. I'm really happy with how this is looking, and now I'm going to go ahead and just put tape right along these straight edges. That way I could just paint on top and get a nice crisp line. But when it does come to the curves, I'm going to have to freehand those, so that's going to be a little bit more tricky. And you'll also see that with a level, I'm going to ensure that my lines are straight just to complete the arches. And for those parts, I'm also going to add painter's tape so that they are perfectly crisp lines. I'm using painter's tape that is specifically made for sharp lines, which is 100% necessary for these arches. With regular painter's tape, I find that it just bleeds through the lines. So make sure that you grab the ones made for sharp lines. So if you know me, you know that I love my neutral tones and of course my greens. So I'm incorporating that into the color palette and you'll see that I'm kind of balancing those colors throughout the whole mural. So if you see a green shape, I'm going to put a neutral color next to it and vice versa. Does painting murals bring you peace? Yeah, oh my God, you have to work so slow. Look at this. Oh no, I messed up. Growing up, I've always wanted to do fun stuff like this. And now that we have our own house, we're able to. So I just want to have fun and I hope you guys like it.
So I'm using a bunch of leftover paint as well as some sample paints that I have laying around. And a couple of people mentioned in my previous mural video that paint samples aren't actual paints so it wouldn't last long, but I learned that this is only true for some brands. So apparently some brands make their samples without binders in the formula so it's not going to last. The ones that I'm using from Bear are the same formula that you would normally buy so before you use paint samples for a mural or any project, make sure to check it online first. Also, another quick tip that I want to mention when painting arches or any curves is just to make sure that you're anchoring your elbow onto the wall or whatever surface you're working on. You want to imagine that your arm is a compass and then you want to move the whole thing to create a swift curved motion. This gives you so much more stability than if you were to freehand it completely. It really does make a world of a difference, so if you ever plan on painting any curves, take my advice. I accidentally spilled all this paint. Oh, I didn't While we wait for that to dry, I'm actually going to get started on my scrap wood storage. So I'm going to build that by using some more pieces of scrap wood. I have a bunch of two by fours and I actually have enough to do this project. So it just worked out really perfectly. I put a little picture of what it's gonna look like, but it's basically a ladder storage. And I actually found this on Pinterest. It has the full cut list and all the plans. So I will link that below for you guys. I'm basically following that to a T because it's going to be the perfect height for my little workshop. I am so ready to find get all of this wood off of the ground so the first step is to cut all the wood so I'm gonna go ahead and do that on my miter saw. I'm gonna put the cut list here on the screen and again this is from Rogue Engineering. I followed the plan pretty much exactly except for I had to modify the top rack just because I ran out of two by fours but it's pretty much all the same and I will link it down below for you guys if you're interested in making this project as well. I just sanded all the wood. This is actually optional, but I want to make sure that it's really strong. So I'm going to pocket hole everything basically. And also it's an exciting day because I just upgraded to a drill and also a driver. This means I'm going to be building stuff a lot faster. I figured if I'm going to upgrade my workshop, I should also upgrade my tools. So these are going to be so handy. Whoa, that is actually so much better than my old drill. I cannot wait to use it. Let's get to building. Okay, upgrading my drill was so worth it because this thing is powerful. I felt like I was able to drill in my pocket holes so much quicker and I ended up actually just doing the pocket holes for the legs and the bottom cart. So this is gonna be pretty sturdy and I really like this project because all you need are two by fours. You don't have to go out and buy expensive pieces of wood to store your scrap wood. So I'm really loving how this is turning out so far and when it came to assembly, you're essentially building two ladders for each side of the rack with each of the shelves spaced out 16 inches and again if you plan on making this taller or shorter just make sure that you're adjusting it accordingly. For this whole project I'm basically using two and a half inch screws so I'm going to do the pilot holes first and you guys are also going to see me using the driver for the first time. I was struggling a little bit when I was first using it. I am so used to using a lot of force when I drive in screws but with a driver it does all the work for you so you don't have to do anything so you're gonna see me messing up here and there and accidentally nicking the wood but it's all a part of the learning process and by the end of it I did start getting the hang of it. I just need to get a little bit more practice before I become a pro. I pretty much want everything to be mobile in the workshop so I can move everything around easily, especially while I work on different projects. This bottom cart is going to be on wheels, so I'm adding in some casters with some brakes. I no longer will have the entire basement to work on projects, so with limited space, it's crucial that I can move everything around to film my videos. I really didn't want a permanent spot for wood storage just because I never know what space I'm going to need to film for the videos, so this solution works perfectly. 
it is time to put it all together so I'm starting by attaching the legs to the base with some pocket hole screws. This is going to hold it into place and make it really sturdy and then all you really have to do is just to screw in the sides for the top shelf rack. This project really does remind me of that firewood storage shed that I built for my backyard if you guys remember from that makeover and I think it just proves that little A-frame triangles are just the best way to store any wood in your home. It's done! Look at it! A mobile wood storage. Where'd you buy this from? Um, Tina's workshop. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, so I'm going to stain or paint this. I really couldn't choose so I went on Instagram and I asked you guys. I actually have not checked what you voted for so let's see. Okay, 77% said to stain this which I'm totally fine with. And by the way, if you're not already following me over on Instagram, make sure you do so so that you don't miss out on any of these polls or updates. I'm always asking you guys for advice so make sure that you check it out. I think staining it is going to be a good choice because it's going to pop against the mural. So first I'm going to condition it and then give it a nice stain. I like to add wood conditioner to any staining projects, that way you can avoid any splotchiness and it really doesn't take that much more extra work, so don't skip this step. And for the actual stain, I'm using the color Early American. I just wanted a dark wood stain that's going to contrast against a lot of the pine scrap wood pieces that are going to go on here. It's my first time using this stain and I really love it and I only needed one coat for the color that I was going for. After the stain is all dry, you just want to follow up with two coats of polyurethane as a top coat to protect your wood. This mural is making me so happy to look at. The colors are so inspiring and it's just the perfect backdrop for my workshop. And the last thing I want to put in here is a workbench. I can't even tell you guys how desperately I needed one. As you guys have seen, I've just been working with this foldable table that I stole from my dad. And what's really exciting is that I'm actually going to have two workbenches. So one, I'm going to put my saw on permanently because whenever it's not in use, I literally just put it on the ground over there. So there needs to be a better system. Also, so can we talk about that? It looks so good. I love how it turned out. But yeah, that is on the docket today. We're going to build a workbench, get everything organized and into place, and then show you guys the final look. Step one, break box. Can you guys even believe it? I'm finally going to have a functioning workbench. I am seriously so excited. This probably should have been the first thing that I bought for my workshop when I was starting all of these projects. But you know what? I think it goes to show that you can make anything happen despite what you may have available to you. So this folding table has been working fine, but the workbench is just gonna be so much better. This one has a butcher block worktop and I love the butcher block because it brings in some natural wood tones and it's also very durable. And I also like that it's super minimal and has a drawer which allows for some extra storage and it was also pretty affordable as well. So I'll link it below for you guys. Once I did stand it up though, I was not sure if this workbench was just too tall for me or if I'm just too used to using my little foldout table. So only time will tell, but I will update you guys once I start using it. It is finally time to get everything into place and finally sort that wood into our new storage rack. This area has made a complete 180 from where it started. It was in shambles before and I was so stressed out just looking at it, but now it's become an inspirational space that I can start my projects in peace. So here is the after. It 
is starting to look so good in here. We've come so far from where we started and I can't wait to show you guys the full workshop makeover. Let me know what you guys think of it so far and also if you have any ideas for the workshop, I'm still planning everything and I'm really determined to get this done. So stay tuned for more workshop updates. Thank you again to Shaker and Spoon for sponsoring today's video. If you wanna get 20% off of your subscription, make sure to click on my link down below. If you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't already. And if you want to see more updates from me, make sure to follow me over on Instagram. I post on there every single day. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Stay inspired and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.